we are going to learn seven ways to customize a clickable email link in Microsoft lists using a JSON so that we can click on the link and a window will pre-populate with a to subject as well as body of an email. But without further ado, let's nerd out. Here we have a baseline snippet of JSON and we are going to take this as a foundation and then update the components and tailor it to our needs. I will then take the final snippet and paste it in the video description so that you can access it. So for now, to start off, let's just copy this code. Then here we are in Microsoft lists and I have this call in here with the emails. So if we select the carrot, go to column settings and edit, I just want to ensure that we are all working on the single line of text column type. And I'm just going to cancel out of here. We paste that JSON. We are once again going to go down to column settings, but this time we are going to select the format this column. Just make sure that you are on this format column tab at the top. Then we are heading on down to this advanced mode. I'm just going to click in here, press Control A to select everything, delete and control V to paste that snippet. Then if we just select this preview button, then we'll see here that this email has now updated. We have some text that says send email, and then it's got this little icon here, that's the hyperlink. So if we click on this, then that new window is going to pop up and we can see that we have a defined email address here, a subject, as well as a body of an email, so you could definitely use this and then just update the parameters, but let's take a look at how we can fine tune each of these components to make this list amazing. The second way that we can customize this column is going to be via this send email text right here, which I like to refer to it as the display text, but it's actually the text content. So in the JSON area over here, we're looking for line number 10 here, which is the text content and we can see here that it says send email. But what if we want to show the email address that is actually in this column? In that case, all that we can simply do is update the send email text to at current field. Just going to backspace there and then we can see here that we have the at current field with those quotation marks around it. And if I now go ahead and select preview, and we can see here that that email address is now showing. So this is the email that was already in that column. We can see here that that's now visible, which I just think is quite handy, but this is totally going to depend on your needs. You'll notice here that this third item is actually blank for an email address. So this one didn't have an email address there. And I'm going to show you how we can handle that a little bit later in this video. But first I want to show you how we can do a few more basic customizations. So if we click on this email hyperlink, then we're going to see here that this is a predefined email. And depending on your circumstances, you might be happy with leaving a predefined email in there, but it might be helpful to pull the email that is already in the list, again, depending on your circumstances. In order to do that, we're once again going to head over to the JSON and what we're looking for is item 21 here, which is below the mail two. And right now we can see that there's that email address that's the predefined one. So if you wanted to predefine somebody within your organization, that's always gonna get these emails and you can include theirs there. Or if you want to update it to this email address, then once again, we're going to update this to that at current field. So that's literally all I've done is replace that specific email address with this current field tag. And now if we go ahead and preview, then when we open up this email, we can see that that two email address has populated the email address within the list item. Back in this email, we can see here that the subject is order follow-up. So it would be really helpful if we could reference this order number column into the subject line of this email so that's automatically pre-populated, which leads me to tip number four, customizing the subject. First thing that we need to do is we need to locate the true original name of this column. And to do that, we can head up to settings, go list settings. I'm just going to open this up in a new tab and we can scroll down here 
and locate that order number column. So if we click on that, then in the URL, what you're looking for is this last piece here, which is field equals and then order number. So the code I'm looking for in my instance is order number. And in this case, it actually matches the name of the column, but it doesn't always match. This is the original name that was given to the column. And if you had a space here originally, then this is going to be different. So I always recommend checking here just to make sure that you're going to pull the right information. It will just save you some frustrations in a moment. So let's go ahead and copy this. I'm going to go Control C. Back in lists, we need to edit the JSON. So here, I'm looking at this subject here, which is line 22. We can see that it already says order follow up. So I want this to say order follow up space and the number sign. And then to pull that column information, we need to enter a new line. I'm going to press enter and then I'm going to paste in here, backspace. And now when you enter this, you'll see here that I have that order number, which is that original name of the column but we need to start off the row with quotations, the square bracket, dollar sign, and then the name of the column, closing bracket, closing quotations, and then a comma to start a new command. Now we can press preview, and then I'm going to select this hyperlink on the first list item. And we can see that that order number is now populating into the subject. That's pretty cool, okay? Back in this email here, Tip number five is how we can pull column information into the body of this email. So in our instance, I want to pull the title beside the hi to make it a nice personalized and customized greeting. So in order to do that, we can go back into this JSON. What we're looking for is this body of email. And remember how the last time when we added this order number, this needed to be on its own operation. So I'm going to create a new line after the high. I'm going to go high space quotations and then we're going to go comma enter. Now I'm going to paste this title column tag which Depending on your situation, you might want to go back into the list settings and just make sure that you're adding in the correct information. Again, this is going to be entered with those opening quotations, open bracket, dollar sign, then the name of the column, closing brackets, closing quotations, and then that comma for the new operation. For this next section of the body, I'm just going to tab this over. And I'm going to add some opening quotations. For some reason I did two, so we'll just delete that. And then we're going to keep the comma and then the rest of it. Now, because this is the end of the operations, we don't need to add another comma here. So if we preview and then open back up this hyperlink, we can see here that high nibbles and kibbles has pulled through. Now that just leads me to a good point because earlier I had nibbles, ampersand symbol, and then kibbles, and the JSON was just cutting off the ampersand. So just be mindful of having any funky characters in the title column because it may not pull through exactly how you would like it to. Tip number six is how we can stylize this icon and just make it a little bit more fun and poppy. In this instance, we're going to be adding quite a few line items into the JSON. So here we have all of the different components that will stylize this icon to our needs. Back in lists, we need to paste this under the element type and above attributes. So I'm just going to click right here. I'm going to press enter to create space. I'm just going to paste that additional snippet of JSON. So now we have all of these are just pulling the inherent values of this icon. So if we go preview, then we can see how that has changed. But some suggestions would be we can make this text decoration bold. We change that. We can see that that has now added that underline. For color, we can just add a color code. I'm just going to replace this inherit with FF3131, and that's just going to make it this red, so a little more vibrant and a little bit more poppy just to make it a bit more fun. 
for the size, I mean, you could leave this as is, but for example, we could make it 20 PX. And if we preview, then we can just see that that makes it really stand out so that people aren't going to miss any action items. And then for the font weight, similar to the decoration, we could change this to bold. If we do that, then that just once again makes it a little bit more bolder, a little bit more visible, make it stand out just a little bit better. Now that we have seen how we can stylize our icon and customize all of this information to our needs, what about these blank columns? So tip number seven is how we can add an if statement to the JSON to manage the situation. So here we have an if statement. And in this case, it's saying if the current field has a value in it, right? So if it's not blank, then show the current value. If it is blank, then we're going to add the text to say need email. So let's go ahead and copy this. And back in the list, we remember that this text right here is this text content. So I'm just going to highlight this current field text here and simply paste that if statement in quotation marks, so we have the quotations equals if, and then your logical test, the true component, and then your false component, closing bracket, and then quotations. So if we preview this, then we'll see here that these two have remained unchanged, but this one that's blank has now returned a need email address. So you can go ahead and update this JSON with additional if statements, um, just throw out other components. If you really wanted to get carried away, the sky is the limit. I personally would try to avoid the situation. Working with JSON is quite time consuming. And so I would avoid trying, you know, entering a million different if statements in there. And, you know, for example, if we go into this column type, column settings and edit, then one option that I would recommend would be making this require field. And that would just eliminate that instance, but that's just one example. And of course, everything is going on your need. If you want to learn more about Microsoft lists, then you can check out my other video here on how to use a new forms feature to collect data within your lists.